What if the Central Powers won World War I? The entire 20th century was in somehow related to World War I, and so an interesting question to ask would be, what if World War I had gone the other side? What if the Central Powers had won the war? How would history be different? That is the question of this alternate history. There were two main points at which the Germans could have easily won the war. They were the two battles of the Marne. The first battle of the Marne in 1914, and the second battle of the Marne in early 1918. Alternate History Hub already did what if the Germans won the first battle of the Marne, so I'm going to do what if the Germans won the second battle of the Marne. The main reason the Germans didn't win the Second Battle of the Marne was that the Allies could use the endless manpower and industrial resources of the United States on their side when Germany was running out of men, meaning that if America had never joined the war on the side of the Allies, the Germans would have been likely to win. The two things that I think would have needed to have happened for the U.S. to not join the war would be that the Germans should have never sent the Zimmerman telegram. This horrified the United States and made the United States think that the Germans wanted to carve up the United States. And secondly, the Germans should never have done their unrestricted submarine warfare. This horrified the American public and made the Americans want to join the war against the Germans. If neither of these things had happened, it would have been unlikely that the U.S. would have gotten involved in World War I, and thus the Germans would have won the Second Battle of the Marne. Had the Germans won the Second Battle of the Marne, they would have seized Paris, and thus a tired France would have surrendered. Britain was immensely war-weary too, meaning that if the Germans seized Paris, the British would likely sign a peace treaty because they just wouldn't have the energy or the men to keep fighting a war, and they would lose hope after the fall of France. The treaty would put the blame of the war on Serbia for starting the war, and as you can see uh, from this map that I made of what the Central Powers would look like after the end of the war, Germany would likely annex Belgium and hold on to the territories it had in the east from the Brest-Litovsk Treaty, as well as annexing a little bit of eastern France. Meanwhile, Austro-Hungary would annex Serbia and large parts of Romania as well as Venice, and Bulgaria would expand into the surrounding nations. Meanwhile, in Africa, the Germans would seize the Belgian Congo as well as parts of the French Congo. Also, the Ottoman Empire would have survived as the Middle East's main hegemon in this timeline. The Austro-Hungarian Empire was a mess, and they would have had to have dealt with this if they had survived the war. And so I think in the 20s, at one point, there likely would have been a civil war between the Austrian and the Hungarian parts of the empire, because the Austrians would want to reform to keep the empire alive, while the Hungarians would resist the reform. And so civil war would break out. I think the Austrians would win, because the Germans would side with the Austrians, because the Austrians are ethnically German. I think after the Civil War, the Austrians would try to make the Austro-Hungarian Empire more democratic to prevent the Slavs from uprising and overthrowing the Austro-Hungarian Empire. As the Germans never would have been outraged from losing the war, the Germans never would have elected Adolf Hitler, and so the Nazi party never would have arisen in Germany. Britain and France would have felt cheated out of a true victory, and so, they would have installed fascist or far-right governments instead of Germany. Britain, France, and Russia, feeling disgruntled from losing the war, would have formed another alliance to take down the Central Powers and regain their dominance. There was a major split in the Japanese military. The army wanted to go after China and Russia, while meanwhile the navy wanted to strike south and attack the U.S., Britain and France, obviously the Navy won in our timeline, but in a world where Russia was weaker, then I can assume that the Japanese army would have won the argument and the Japanese would have gone after Russia and China. As Japan and the Central Powers would both be fighting Russia, we can assume that they would have formed an alliance.
When war would break out in the forties, it would be a world war, meaning that it would be too complicated for me to explain the war chronologically. So instead, I'm going to break down the war into different theaters. The first of which is the Western Front. The British and the French forces would drive east, reaching the Rhine before being stopped by the German army. But like our timeline, the Germans would defeat the British and the French armies. Surprisingly, the U.S. would likely remain neutral in World War II in this timeline for two reasons. The first being that the U.S. can choose between imperialists and fascists and communists. Both sides are unappealing to the U.S.'s democratic capitalist ideology. And second is that 76% of Americans in our timeline didn't want to get involved in World War II until the Battle of Pearl Harbor. And the only reason the U.S. got involved in World War II was the Battle of Pearl Harbor happened. But with the Japanese focusing their strength on the Chinese and the Russians, Pearl Harbor never would have happened, and so the U.S. would have remained isolationist throughout World War II in this timeline. An often glossed over part of history is how much the Russian peasantry dislikes Stalin. An example of this is when the German forces invaded the Ukraine, the local Ukrainians waved them on, and there were Russian contingents in the German army. And this is for the Germans who thought the Slavs were subhuman and should be enslaved. Imagine what would have happened if a much nicer Kaiser's Germany invaded Russia. There'd be mass revolutions, and Russia likely would have collapsed. Also, you, when you add in that the brest Treaty would have made the German-Russian border much closer to Moscow, it seems clear that the Germans would have defeated the Russians in World War II in this timeline. Meanwhile, in the Far East, the Japanese would be attacking Vladivostok and the Russian positions in Siberia, so we can assume that Russia would have been partitioned with the West going to Germany and the East going to Japan. The Japanese would have also pivoted south and conquered the British and French positions in Southeast Asia, as well as seizing a lightly garrisoned India. China has such a large population, thus... Japan would be unable to conquer the majority of China. The Japanese could seize the coasts of China with their navy and with their army, but the further and further they'd get into the interior, the less and less control they'd have, meaning in the end, the Japanese would be unable to conquer China. After the end of the war, a cold war would start between the Kaisers, Germany, and Japan. Without Russia existing in this timeline, that would mean that China and Cuba never would have become communist because their communist groups were sponsored by the Russians. And without the Russians, these areas never would have become communist and would have kept their pre-communist ideologies. In this timeline, the U.S.'s sphere of influence would have been the Americas as well as Australia and New Zealand, like the Monroe Doctrine said, but overall, the U.S. would mainly be an isolationist country that wouldn't get involved in the Cold War. The Japanese would be the first power to break in this Cold War, because the population of the Third World would expand rapidly in the 70s and across the Cold War in general, because better farming techniques, as well as better medicine, would mean that the population of the Third World would skyrocket, while Japan's population would remain stagnant, so there wouldn't be enough Japanese to hold on to the Southeast Asian Empire, meaning that there would be mass revolutions, there just wouldn't be enough Japanese to fight off the revolutions, and the Japanese Empire would collapse. The collapse of Japan would lead to a power vacuum in East Asia, in which the Japanese and the Americans would both try to get a larger sphere of influence in East Asia. This would be the main struggle as the millennium approaches, and would still be a struggle now, as Japan and the U.S. would fund coups and all sorts of proxy wars to try to control East Asia. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this timeline, please comment or subscribe. What if Altist? Thank you for watching.